Hey everyone, Captain Leon from Captain Leon's Boating and More, and I think you're gonna enjoy this video, but I'm not happy. Yeah, so I'm not happy, I'm frustrated. You know, it was only two years ago that I replaced my impeller housing, my OEM Yamaha impeller housing. It did last seven years. I replaced it, I replaced it with the exact same product and I always, you know, if you're a follower of my channel, you know I, I, I kind of harp on OEM. Uh, so I bought the OEM Yamaha Impella housing to replace it. Uh, that entire video, you know, I'm gonna link up here. So if you haven't seen it, it's called the Ultimate Yamaha Jet Pump Pull. Uh, goes over all the details of removing the jet pump and replacing it. But guess what? Two years have passed and I'm pissed off. The, the new OEM Impella housing has started to develop the same swell factor that the first one did, uh, and here we go again. So I'm doing now what I should have done then, and that is purchase the Solus Solid Stainless Steel Impella housing. Uh, let me uh, get into this with you right now and show you what we're dealing with. All right, so here we go. This is the original OEM Impella housing from Yamaha that was on the boat. Uh, lasted seven years without problem. Most folks uh, that are familiar with these and the problems know that it's an aluminum casing with a stainless steel ring that's pressed into it, right? These two different metals, the way that they react sometimes is a little dissimilar from one another. We're talking about a saltwater environment, temperatures, who knows what, and it creates a bit of a bowing uh, on the stainless steel liner. Uh, and that is all you need, right? The tolerances of the impeller spinning in here are so tight that any little swelling of this ring, uh, you're going to start to get rubbing. You're going to get a familiar kind of a banging sound and uh, bang, 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 you know, as it's, it's running in the driveway there on the hose. Uh, so I had to replace this. My mistake two years ago is I'm a big OEM guy. I'm always harping use OEM. Well, I did. I bought for about $106 the replacement Yamaha OEM Impella housing. It's only two years gone and I'm starting to get that same sound again. It's starting to bang again. So what are we doing? Well, I'm going to do now what I should have did two years ago, um, as indicated earlier. And here we go. This is the new Solus stainless steel Impella housing. Uh, it is a pretty well-made product. I'm going to take it out for you right here. And you can see the uh, part number on it, YFS HS155. Um, it's made by Solus. I bought it from Riva Racing. Uh, you can buy it, I guess, from a couple of different, you know, distributors of the Solus product. It is solid stainless steel. There is no liner pressed in it. It's all one piece. We should not have that issue of the dissimilar metals. I do like that it has a really nice solid uh, rubber, um, you know, I guess you'd call it like a gasket or ring on it so that when the parts compress, it just makes a nice tight seal. And, uh, you know, that's where we're at. You know, what I'm not crazy about is the bolting, uh, you know, how it bolts. You can see right there, there's a, a notch for a nut, right? So this is the uh, Yamaha OEM bolts. It's a 10 millimeter bolt with a 1.25 thread on it. And, you know, it goes into the, into the OEM, you know, housing uh, into these slots. So, you know, you can see it's pre-drilled, uh, it's encased. You don't see the back of the nut. It kind of goes right inside. And this is how the whole jet pump goes together. But on the Solus, uh, the bolt fits through and then you're required to take the factory supplied nuts and attach it to the back of the bolt. A little bit different style, but um, well, we'll see. More importantly is the fact that years and years and years of use is expected now to get out of this without a problem uh, because it is all one metal. So let's just quickly go over how simple it is uh, to make this, this swap uh, and this repair, if you will. All right, so here we are at the jet pump. We're gonna remove it. It's so simple, it's so easy. We wanna disconnect the steering control cable. Very simple, I just have to remove this nut, let the bolt drop out, 
Be careful, there's two little white plastic Teflon pieces in there you don't wanna lose. And notice that I have mine installed with the nut on the top. That's because of the aftermarket thrust vectors. If you have the bolt dropping in from the top, it's very, very difficult when you know to pull the bolt out. It, it's hitting the spring. So doing it in reverse, you just loosen the nut and the bolt will drop out. And it's a Teflon lock nut, so we're not too worried about it. The second thing we wanna do is remove the directional control cable, which lifts our bucket up and down. Uh, that is um, super easy. And I gotta tell you, I am so frustrated with so many YouTube videos that you watch where everybody is removing the bolts on the, on the side of the cable or they're removing these bolts here. Absolutely unnecessary. Let me show you how quick and easy it is to do this. All right, so we are fully attached right now. And you can see that there's a spring in there, all right? All you do is just reach your thumb in here, pull back the spring. You get in this, drop it down. How freaking easy is that? <sighs> okay, so now we have the cable removed for our directional controller. We have the steering cable removed. That's so easy. You know, just save all your parts right there. You don't want to lose them. And now we're talking about four bolts, right? So we have the two on the top, left to right. This one, as you can see, is already loose. I'll pull that right out. And then we have the two on the bottom. So let's not forget them, right? There's one and there's two. Uh, so we're just gonna remove that and then our entire jet pump assembly will pull right out. So as you can see, I've taken it apart and I didn't bother removing the lateral thruster by Jet Boat Pilot. I left that installed because I'm able to get to these uh, bolts from the back, you know, just enough to be able to get the, the nozzle off. So now this is done and we could just set this aside. Okay, now that that's out of the way, we can remove any eel grass that's in there from our last outing. Uh, but now we should be able to pull out the entirety of the jet pump housing right here. There's nothing holding it in. Uh, sometimes you do need to apply a little pressure to the back. Um, you know, there's a seal back in here and there's a little notch that you could put a screwdriver in to be able to just break that. Uh, let me demonstrate that right now. Uh, right over here, you just want to pay attention to these tabs here. And what you want to do is get in there, um, you know, with a kind of an angle driver, if you will, apply a little pressure. And if you apply a pressure, it should, it should pop apart. Uh, you can do it on this side as well. You got the little tab uh, back over here on the bottom. Maybe this one, will, you'll see how it, it actually just starts to separate as soon as I get the, the blade of the driver in there. There you go, and she's starting to pull apart. Now mine's coming apart easy because, you know, I am in here now and then, but if you're having a real difficult time getting this apart uh, to, you know, just get this housing to pull apart a little bit because of the fact that it was sealed, I have a real great tip for you I'm about to show you. So what you wanna do is you wanna insert one of the factory bolts uh, right back in to where it was just enough like that and then what you're going to do is you're going to take a c-clamp and you're going to put uh, one end of the clamp on the back uh, rim if you will of the housing and then you're going to take the front of the clamp and you're just going to screw it out enough now remember you're dealing with aluminum here all right so you're just going to put the front of the clamp on the bolt, the back end on the housing, and almost in the same manner you would use a steering wheel puller, just apply a little pressure. And my recommendation would be to do that on all four bolts all around, nice and even, just nice, even little pressure, and eventually you will get that to pop, uh, I feel, without doing any damage. But again, look, this is me. You know, you got to choose your own path. I don't want you to say, Captain Leon told you to do this, and, and, and that's how you damaged your your impeller housing, uh, again, uh, at your own risk, but that works fine for me, and I'm able to just pull on it with the, boom, see that? Uh, you know, with that C-clamp, and she'll just pull right out. So now let's pull the entire jet pump out.
Okay, and there you have it. All right, with our impeller. So we're good to go. Let me set this down and show you the impeller housing. All right, so here is the housing and we can see significant areas where the impeller is rubbing, uh, indicated by the rust marks. Again, caused by the swelling of the stainless steel liner against the aluminum outside the dissimilar metals. Uh, the rest of it seems to look okay. I just find it interesting how it's on the same exact side here as it was on the original impeller housing that I replaced two years ago. I wonder what that's telling us, but uh, just the same. Now we're gonna remove this and replace it with the Solus. Uh, this is done by five bolts. One, two, three, four, and five is the little smaller bolt right there. Uh, so we're gonna take out those bolts right now and remove that housing. Okay, we've removed the five bolts as described earlier. Uh, I'm just going to caution everyone to be very careful taking these bolts out. You know, sometimes with the Loctite that's in there with them, uh, it could really be a little tough getting them to, to come out. I'm looking at the threads here. I don't know if it's coming into focus, but uh, I had a hard time. And, you know, you fear that, like, as you're loosening it, you're just going to feel the bolts snap off. So if you feel extensive pressure, just kind of go forward and back a little bit. Uh, you know, local uh, Yamaha uh yama peep i should say keith at a local beach recommended that that we just go back and forth a little bit uh just to get it to loosen before we go ahead and snap one of these bolts off so uh once that's done you know now it's a question of loosening this housing you know we could use a, a similar technique as we used before where we can just get in there um you know with a screwdriver to try to just pry it back a little bit you know just to get the seal to break you know and you could see i'm starting to peel it apart you can see it the seam coming apart there. So let me just pull this out now. Okay, there it is. It's out. And just be mindful of this little collar piece in here and there's one in here too we're gonna have to get those out okay we're gonna have to get these out this little collar piece here this little collar piece here just be mindful because you're gonna need them on the new housing uh, but here you know you could see our our swell marks right there so let's see if we can get this uh, cleaned up a bit all right so here we go back in the house uh, yeah I'm seeing triple. Uh, so these are the two Yamaha OEMs. Again, as mentioned, notice how the burn marks are all on the, what would be the starboard side of the boat uh, caused by the impeller banging and rubbing. And it's a, it doesn't look like much, but to hear it, wow, it's some noise, um, you know, when it's dried out. Uh, so I had a devil of a time getting these guides out. Um, you know, you have to be real careful, but, but basically it fits back you know, in here, right? And what I had to do was just tap very gingerly with a screwdriver right at that collar. Uh, try to get a very small screwdriver in there to just tap to grab the, you know, grab the edge of it until she pushes through. Uh, sometimes it works out, sometimes it doesn't. And, you know, as you can see uh, from the unit two years ago, I eventually got frustrated and just, you know, sort it out uh, it is aluminum it cuts real easy and then it just popped right out but you need to save these guides they're imperative um and you know you could see on the newer unit uh how they go in uh it just kind of slides in here so um you're dealing with two right so there's one uh, that's going to be in the top corner and one that's going to be in the bottom corner these uh don't have it so uh all right let's uh move on to the next step here all right we are all cleaned up uh, best as we could be and uh, just going to apply a little bit of the uh, anaerobic gasket maker um, you know it's what's recommended by Yamaha we we'll just put it around keep in mind we do have that that nice rubber gasket so uh, that's gonna make a nice seal so all right here we go okay we've applied a little bit of that Permatex sealant and uh, to the extent it's even necessary and now we're gonna dry fit on new impeller housing.
All right, so just want to bring to light that because of the rubber here can be a little bit dry, I did apply a little bit of super lube. It's never a bad idea to lube your rubber a little bit, and uh, this way it'll slip right in, or at least it should. So let's see how this goes. Wow, did you hear that snap? That snapped right in. I mean, I like the way that that sounded. Oh, that rubber just like went right in and it made a beautiful seal. So I'm really liking it already and uh, seems like a solid product. So let's go ahead and now put the bolts back in. Uh, these according to Yamaha only get torqued down to 29.5 foot pounds. You're supposed to use a little Loctite, uh, not the permanent Loctite, removable Loctite. Uh, I can tell you these things were hard coming out. I did use a little Loctite last time. I'm a little hesitant to do it again because uh, they were really in there. You know, in a salt water environment, it almost acts as a bit of Loctite on its own. So let's go ahead and uh, just get these bolts in there. All right, so let's just back up the train a little bit here. Uh, in rethinking it, in, in speaking to my buddy Mike from the YouTube channel Boating Propolis, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna link that uh, right here. Uh, he's a guy I definitely trust. He had said, look, you know, I get it. The bolts are going in a little stiff. There might be some, you know, thread locker still in there, uh, and, and it probably is not gonna ever come out. However, it's better that you protect those threads from uh, salt water intrusion, uh, which could cause corrosion. He recommended the Permatex thread sealant. It's a white based uh, sealant uh, to just put on the threads and hopefully you could see this here. Um, you don't need a lot and you just wanna kinda work it in and you know get it on there. And, and that'll kinda like protect it uh, from the environment and then we're gonna screw this all back together. So, so we're good with that now. All right, so it's always a good idea when you're in the middle of servicing this uh, jet pump unit to remove these four bolts to take a look at your inlet screen, make sure there's nothing in there that's impeding the flow of water. Uh, if it is dirty, clean it out, of course, and also to remove the cone uh, so you can take a look at the bearings and service them appropriately. So uh, to get these bolts out, um, you know, you're going to need an Allen key here. And you can see mine still have a little of the residue of the, the removable Loctite that was on there. But uh, there's a little notch here on the side, and you can just go ahead and stick a, you know, a screwdriver in there, and that'll that'll get it going for you. Okay, we should have it removed or loose enough now. Pry it off, and I see what drip. Uh-oh. Well, I got news for you. Not too bad. I mean, no real significant water came out. We could see the remnants of the grease in here. Um, and take a look at these bearings not a lot of water so that's pretty good this black ring on here you really should replace and I did actually buy a new one so I'm gonna clean the grease out of here replace it with some clean Epnot grease and uh, we'll take it from there all right so we've cleaned this cone up pretty nicely we got the black o-ring off of it cleaned all the grease out and we'll refill. Okay, my turn, calling on all Yama peeps and Yama pros. This question's for you. Why is it that there are two different types of grease being asked for within the jet pump housing in and around the bearings, right? We have the Epnox Zero Grease. Some of you have heard of it. That goes inside the cone itself, and it also goes in the spacer channel between the two bearings. My question is, that should be enough, right? No. 
They call for the water resistant marine grease by Yamalube to be put on the bearing itself. So you got two different greases that are in contact with each other. Are they working with each other? Uh, I don't know the answer to this. If somebody does, please explain. Let me show you what I'm talking about within the, within the service manual. All right, so here we go. We add the Epnot grease to the space between the drive shaft and the spacer. So the drive shaft's going through, you have the spacer and that you know grayish area, that's gonna be your Epnot grease being inserted there. That's on top of that bearing. We're then going to install the bearing on the top. So we have that Epnot grease in there, you know, touching the bottom and the top of the bearing itself. We're also gonna be adding the Epnot grease you know, into the cone assembly. So that cone, of course, is being pressed on the front of that bearing, and that grease is gonna be intermixing with the bearing grease itself, which is not Epnot grease. So here we can clearly see the Epnot grease in the spacer, but more importantly, it's grease letter A on the bearings itself, both the impeller side bearing and the outer bearing, grease letter A, Epnot in the middle, Epnot in the cone. Grease letter A, according to the manual, is water resistant grease, Yamalub marine grease, as compared to the Epnoc. So why and how are these two greases working with each other as they come in contact with each other? Somebody got an answer? I'm happy to hear it. Okay, so this is the cone assembly. As you can see, I've completely cleaned it out. It's devoid of all grease. We're gonna be introducing the, uh, you know, the Epnoc grease into it. The manual calls for 0.7 of an ounce. I don't know. This is 4.5 ounces. So, you know, roughly 20% uh, of this tube I should be putting in here. Uh, so it's not an exact science. Uh, also, by the way, the, um, the black uh, gasket on here is, according to the manual, not reusable. I have reused this. In my last video, I reused it. But this time around, I'm going to be replacing it uh, with the new black gasket. So that's just a question of, you know, pulling this off here. And I should be able to do that for you. Um, there we go. And we'll pop that off. So we're going to discard that. Here is the new gasket, if anybody needs the number. The 9321054010. Uh, I don't know, I think it was about $2, so clearly, uh, you know, worth it, uh, you know, to just do it. It's not a, not a part that's hard to get. And now we're going to introduce the, uh, the Epnock, Epnock, Epnock grease in here. Doesn't really tell you how to do it, so I'm just kind of moving it around in here. As you can see. And again, to know exactly when we're at 0.7, 20% uh, of this tube, a little tough to say. I don't think I can necessarily overdo it, but just making sure I got enough in there. And that seems to be about right uh, for the Epnock. My guess is it runs and it pushes up against the bearing, uh, especially as it heats up and liquefies a little bit. So there you have it. Okay, we are ready for assembly. We got the Epnot grease inside the cone. We have the uh, water resistant marine grease has been applied to the bearing itself, as well as on the O-ring gasket. And now we're ready to just push them together. All right, so we got the, the cone on and now we're gonna put our screws in. And once again, we're gonna be using the uh, Permatex thread sealant, uh, which is comparable to the Loctite thread sealant. And uh, we're not going to be using traditional Loctite. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna talk about that in a second. I know I mentioned it briefly when we were putting the bolts in uh, you know, for the impeller housing. Uh, I'll cover that in a minute. All right, so we got the cone installed, bolts are tight, thread sealant. Always a good idea when you have your jet pump apart 
to go ahead and inspect your inlet strainer. I mean, look, this is an, a, an essential part of the jet pump operation. It's where it's pulling in the water to be forced into the engine for cooling. Uh, you know, you want to take a look at this. If there's anything in here that's impeding the flow of water, then you could end up overheating your engine and, and having a problem. So let's just see what this looks like. All right, so we could see our inlet strainer is completely clean. Uh, there's no issue, no problem with it. Um, so yeah, I mean, as far as the functioning of the jet pump, you know, you, you have water that is rushing through this jet pump, and hopefully you can see this. You know, the impeller is pushing the water through the jet pump, and assuming my finger is the water, no, I'm not giving you the finger. You know, if the water goes flying through there, this inlet strainer picks up that water and the water is forced in this direction. So the water is going to come in here and going through this hole right here, through the inlet strainer and then out through the hose back into the engine to cool the engine. And that's how our cooling system works on these boats. It's pretty simple. This looks good. We're just going to put it all right back together. Okay, we are now at the final stages of assembly. Uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and put on the anaerobic gasket maker, uh, you know, on the mating parts. That's what you gotta do. That's what we're gonna do. And that creates a bit of a seal, if you will. I'm just going to suggest to be very careful around this hole because, you know, you don't want a lot of goop getting into the hole. This is where, of course, our water enters from the in inlet screen uh, and forces its way into the engine. So this is the last thing we want to block up with anything. Okay, we got it in. You notice for a moment there, I had to twist the impeller just to get the spline teeth to line up on the shaft to go into the back of the intermediate bearing, you know, which is deep inside there. Uh, now we have to put, you know, a little bit of the sealant here as well. And uh, we'll take it to that next step right now. Okay, so one final word as we're in the final assembly here. I just wanna talk about Loctite. So do we put them on bolts, do we not? Now look, uh, in the service manual, it references Loctite 572 is the code to put on the bolts that assemble a jet pump. Well, as you recall, as I mentioned earlier in this video, um, Mike from the YouTube channel, Boning Propolis, and I'm gonna plug Mike uh, once again here. It's the second time I'm plugging him. Ooh. I'm not quite sure I like the way that sounds. Anyway, point is, uh, he had recommended put on some thread sealant uh, at a minimum. Well, it turns out he's right. Loctite 572 in the service manual is not really Loctite. You go to the front of the service manual and it references that it's just a thread sealant. So bottom line is for the bolts assembling the jet pump, it is not a Loctite, it's a thread sealant. Uh, this is the Permatex version of it. It's a white sealant that you're just gonna put on the threads. And you know, they recommend that you uh, put it on about three quarters of the thread here. You don't put it on the first few threads uh, and you just, you know, smear it around. It doesn't need a lot and it'll protect it uh, and make it easy to come out when you need to remove it. Uh, so there's your tip for you. This is the story uh, with thread sealant. Does anybody else get nervous at this point? I mean, you do all this work and I mean, what if you turn that key and all of a sudden... That would not be good. All right, fingers crossed. It's running. All 
right, so that's a wrap. Started up, it was a little noisy at first, but then, I don't know, once the water got going and it, I don't know if it seeded itself a while, it quieted right down, uh, you know, and then I ran it for a while, it sounded great, revved it a few times. Uh, peace of mind, right? Stainless steel liner in there. I don't have to worry about any swelling. So uh, all good. A little expensive, 300 and something bucks. But hey, listen, I'm hoping I am done. I am done. I don't want to do this again. Uh, so look, it slows me down a little bit when I'm making these videos and I'm filming and trying to document it for you guys. I just, you know, to the extent it helps somebody, you know, brings me some peace as well. Uh, so look, uh, if you're not already a subscriber to my channel, you know, join the 5,000 or so other folks um, and uh, and subscribe. Hit that notification bell so you're notified anytime I produce another video. And uh, always happy to hear uh, your comments, uh, any information you can provide to me. I am a lifetime learner, uh, aren't we all? All right, peace, everybody. Happy and safe boating. Captain Leon signing off.